Welcome to Trumping the Arts with your host, Natalie Buds. Today we're going to be talking about Trump and his standpoint and view on the arts. You may know where your current president stands on environmental issues, things like global warming is an expensive hoax, or where he stands on immigration, such as they're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, and they're bringing rapists. But do you know how your newly elected president feels about the arts? Well, I've stumbled on a few good articles and blog posts on sites such as Artspace and Artist Network to let you know how Trump feels about the arts. Donald Trump, being the wealthy businessman and the president of the United States, of course, obviously has plenty of money to go around. Anyone, and possibly everyone, could be interested in the cash he sits upon, and some of those people, of course, are artists. In the mid-1980s, the sales associate at Christie's Auction House were dead set on getting the young and wealthy Donald Trump into buying fine art. He wasn't so much into art, or nobody really knew if he was or not, so naturally they figured they might as well test the waters. He was the brother-in-law of one of their front desk women and was known to be quite wealthy. Donald Trump currently has a home filled with fine art, so perhaps they would have succeeded, correct? Well, photos of Trump's large living room show Pierre-Augustine Renoir's famous piece, Le Logue, on the wall. This was a painting that was sold at Christie's auction in 1989, but the piece, in fact, in the living room of Trump is fake. This isn't the only offset that artists see when they speculate Donald Trump and his real opinion on the arts. In 2007, Trump is said to have spent about $20,000 that belonged to his charity foundation to buy a life-size portrait of himself during a fundraising auction at his club in Florida. Using money from charity funds and spending it on objects that don't benefit the charity is in fact violating IRS rules against self-dealing, which should prohibit nonprofit leaders from spending charity money on themselves. Mark Owens, the former director of the IRS division overseeing tax-exempt enterprises, says to the Washington Post, It's not charitable use, it's non-charitable use. As said by Donald Trump himself, Being good in business is the most fascinating kind of art. Making money in art and working in art in good business is the best art. It's quite possible the only art that interests Trump is that of deal. Another similar incident occurred in the 1980s when the famous Andy Warhol himself asked Trump if he could do a silkscreen print for him to put in the lobby of the Trump Tower. Although Trump did not openly discuss with Warhol about having him create artwork for his new building, he did give Warhol a businessman's yes, or more so a polite yes, giving the impression that they would discuss furthermore later. So, the famous artist did a series of silkscreen paintings enriched with gold dust for the Trump Tower for Donald Trump. When he had confidently given them the expensive silk screens, Trump turned down the paintings with a quick no, showing no appreciation or sorrow about the miscommunication. All in all, is it important to our nation that we select not only a president that appreciates the creation and process of art, but a president whom appreciates the piece itself? Art isn't just the laborious task of creating something physically, but art can be a creation of emotion, something mentally that sticks with us longer than any material object could. A president who appreciates the arts is more likely to appreciate the artist, and aren't we all artists? Thank you again for joining me on this one-time podcast, Trumping the Arts.